Okay, Chapter 2, Operations and Expressions, Section 2.1, Expressions. We'll start off with a couple definitions. First of all, the definition of expression. An expression is a constant, a variable, or a combination of constants, variables, operation symbols, and grouping symbols such as parentheses. So when they talk about parentheses, that would be our traditional grouping symbol, but they might also use brackets or braces as well. So those would all fall into this um, definition of expression also. And our next definition is to evaluate an expression. And that's one of the first things that we do with an expression in an algebra class. So we evaluate it. And we evaluate an expression by substituting a number for each variable in the expression and then calculating the result. If a variable appears more than once in the expression, the same number is substituted for that variable each time. So let's look at an example. Evaluate the expression 30 divided by x for x equals 6. So as we just read, the way you would evaluate this expression would be to substitute for x the value 6 in our initial expression over here. So I'm going to put 30 divided by, and now I get to the spot where x would have been in the expression, so now I'm going to put the 6 in there. And so 30 divided by 6 is 5. And that's it. So when you're asked to evaluate an expression, you're just going to substitute or plug in that value for the variable. All right, let's go ahead and look at that now in the context of an application. So we're told that the enrollment fee for a college student is $87 per unit. And we call them units here at Chabot. A lot of other colleges and universities refer to them as hours. So in this problem, you're going to keep hearing them talk about the number of hours a student is taking and just translate that to units. That's the same thing. So complete the table below to help find an expression that describes the total cost of enrolling in n hours of classes. So that's actually our goal is to come up with an expression that says, all right, if a student is taking n hours, how much is that going to cost? The idea of making this table is to kind of work with some concrete numbers and see if we can develop a pattern that will help us get to that expression. In the long run, we might get better at this and just go straight to the expression. But first, let's start off with the table. So if the student is taking one unit or one hour, how much is that going to cost? Well, it's $87 per unit or hour. So one unit would cost $87. So what if they take two units? Well, it should cost twice as much. So what we would do there, if we were doing the work, and I guess I'll show that over here on the side, is I would do two times that $87. And then I'm just going to do that off on the side over here on my calculator. Two times 87 is 174. So I'd fill that in on the chart for two units or two hours. That's $174. Well, what if they're taking three units? Then it's that same idea. We do three times 87. And if we do that three times 87, we get 261. So we fill that in. And what if they were taking four units? Same idea, four times 87. And four times 87 is 348. So we fill that in. And then the one they really want us to do is what do we do if the student is taking n hours. So when they give you a variable like that, you can't just come up with a number. But you can still come up with an expression that explains how someone could calculate that later if they found out the value of n. So how do we do that? Well, if it was 2 units, we did 2 times 87. If it was 3 units, we did 3 times 87. When it was 4 units, we did 4 times 87. So if it's n units, it should be the same thing. It should be n times 87. And again, I can't say what that's equal to here because I don't know the value of n, but I can still write an expression for it. And usually when we have an expression that has the, a variable and a number, we put the number first. So I'm going to go ahead and just switch that around and call it 87n. And then I'll fill that in right here. So 87n. Now when you're doing problems like this on my math lab, it can vary a bit as to what they want you to put in this slot. On some of the problems, they do want you to put 87, 174, 261, 348. On others, they'll ask you to show your work and put 2 times 87 equals 174. So just pay attention to the directions and the way that's formatted in my math lab. 
And then finally with this problem they want us to evaluate the expression that we found for n equals 15. So always when we have an expression we're kind of stuck. We can't go any further until somebody tells us what value of n we're going to be asked to evaluate that for. So I couldn't simplify it or go any farther here, but now that they're telling me that n is equal to 15, I can plug that in. So I'd say, all right, if a student is taking 15 units, that should be $87 times that n of 15. And 87 times 15 is 1305. And that would be the number, but we're working in the context of an application, so we always want to put the units. We're calculating 87n, which is an expression for the total cost, which is in dollars. So I would say it's going to cost three hundred, sorry, thirteen hundred and five dollars for fifteen units or hours. And that would do it for this problem. Okay, we're continuing on in section 2.1, and we're going to be asked to take some words and translate those into symbolic expressions. Our first one is to translate subtract 5 from the number into an expression, and then after we're done with that, we'll evaluate it for 8. So subtract 5 from the number, so 5 is a constant, and we'll use that number in our symbolic expression of this, and then from the number. So now we have, that sounds like a variable to me because we don't know what the number is. So I would substitute a letter there. The standard thing to do would be to substitute x, but I often like to use a letter that goes with the word, so since it's the number I think I'm going to use an n here. So at first you might think this is going to be 5 minus n because you hear it's a subtraction problem, but when you are subtracting the 5 from the number, that Im implies that the number was there first, and then we subtracted 5 from that. So this is actually going to translate as the number with 5 subtracted away from that. So it'll be n minus 5. And that's pretty common with subtraction, that they're telling you what to subtract first, and then what it's being subtracted from second. And that always causes kind of a reversal between the way the words appeared and the way the um, symbols come up on the paper. And then evaluating that for 8, I would just say that's 8 minus 5, and so that's 3. Let's go ahead and try that again for the expression or the phrase 16 divided by the number. So that switch that we got a moment ago with subtraction does not happen here with the division. 16 is there first, and then that is divided by this number, which I'll use n again for. So one thing I could write is 16 divided by n with the division symbol. Another more common way to handle that in an algebra class would be to do it as a fraction. The numerator has the, the first number, and then our divisor goes in the denominator, and we'd write 16 over n. Either of those answers would be acceptable. And it says to repeat the last one, so I'm going to go ahead and assume they meant to repeat the evaluate as well. So that would be 16 divided by 8, and then that gives us 2. All right, and then going the opposite way on this next one, they want us to translate the expression 4 plus x into words. So one of the things I would do is I would take that x, and I would say, okay, for that I'm going to say the, the phrase the number. So one possible translation would just be just as I read it, but substituting the number here, so 4 plus a number. And I think that's perfectly acceptable. But if we wanted to be more consistent with this first example up here, then we might say that the number was added to 4, uh, or that... Uh, the, yeah, the number was added to 4, so that would be another way you could do it. A number is added to 4. And you might notice in one of my options here, I did just the same order, the 4 and then the number, and then in this one I have the reverse where the 4 is second and the number is coming first. With addition, order doesn't matter, so either of those translations would be correct. When it's subtraction, the order does matter, and so you have to be more careful that you get it in the right order. Let's try that same translation type of skill in the context of an application. 
So if t is the total cost in dollars for n students to go on a ski trip, then t divided by n is the cost per student. Evaluate t divided by n for t equals 9,000 and n equals 20. And what does your result mean in this situation? So first I'm going to write down the expression t divided by n. And as I set up above, I'd rather write that as t over n. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to plug in my numbers. And because they want to know what it means in the situation, I'm going to plug in the numbers with units. So the t is 9,000, but 9,000 what? Well, t is the cost in dollars. So I'm going to say that that's $9,000 I'm plugging in. And then for the denominator, we want n, where n is 20, but 20 what? And where does it say that? n is the number of students going on the trip, so that would be 20 students. And then this is a division problem, so you can just divide this out, 9,000 divided by 20, and I get 450 for that, but 450 what? It's $450 per student. And so I'll just say that in words to express what it means, but the units are really helpful for that. So the trip costs $450 per student. That actually might seem a little expensive for one day skiing, but if they're coming from the Bay Area, maybe they're renting a bus and maybe they're renting their equipment and all this other stuff. So who knows, maybe they're even staying the night at a hotel. So that could be a reasonable answer for that. And it always is good to think about, is your answer reasonable or not? All right, let's look at one more application. An elevator rises 2t yards in t seconds. And they want us to evaluate 2t for t equals 1, t equals 2, and t equals 3. Since they want us to evaluate this multiple times, I think it might be nice to make a little table here. So I'm going to make a table. And on the left side, I'll list the values of t that they're interested in, which would be 1, 2, and 3. And then on the other side, I'll put the expression that I'm trying to evaluate, which is 2t. And then... I'll show the work on the side and fill it into the table. So what is 2t if t equals 1? That would be 2 times 1, which is 2. And we would have 2 times 2 equals 4 if we plug the 2 in for the t right there. And then finally 2t, where t is equal to 3, would be 2 times 3, or 6. And then explain your answer for t equals 3. Well, we know the t is the second, so uh, that's three seconds of time. And six is the distance the elevator is rising, and that's measured in yards. So I would translate that as the elevator rises six yards. And then finally on this, they want to know at what speed is the elevator rising. So when I think about a speed, I think about the speed of a car, and there I would do something like miles per hour. Sometimes with objects um, that are moving slower, they do feet per second. In this case, it looks like they're using yards. So I want to talk about how many yards is this moving over how many seconds. And so the elevator's rising six yards in three seconds, so I could say right away that's six yards or divided by 3 seconds and then my 3 would go into that 6 a couple times and I could say that I have a speed of 2 yards per second and one of the things I think they wanted us to see here is that 2 the speed is the coefficient or the number that's multiplying our variable of t and we'll see in later chapters that that's very very common that if you have a variable with a number in front that that number will represent a rate or a speed in this case all right that's it for section 2.1